Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to our Dith Martian playthrough with me, your host, Lucky Marine in EU4. Now, I've actually decided on a name for this this whole playthrough, and it's going to be called Dith Martians Have Landed. Now, if you've watched from episode one, after I've tinkered with it, etc, etc, then you'll already know that it's Dith Martians Have Landed. But for me, I recorded a block of 10 first and then went back and, and decided on something so uh, so we kind of muddled through the first 10 by calling it Mary or something because of this woman here. Is it Virgin Mary? Is it meant to be a depiction of the Virgin Mary? I don't know. I don't know. So from now on, Dith Martians have landed. Right, okay. Without further ado, let's get into the meat of this episode. What have we just done? We have just pieced out for all the power projection and all the money. We have got advisors in every slot, even though we can't afford it. Because I'm fine with eating through one ducat 49 a month for an extra three points. Now things might have changed, uh, I've just realised this. Um, I changed things for the Japanese playthrough because I, I went back and I looked at a few videos that I'd done uh, just gauging how I'm, I'm getting on. That, that was my very first um, playthrough series uh, and I watched every fifth video just to see if I'm getting better at talking into a mic on my own in a room with just a cat for company. And it. it Turns out that I am. It, it it does get easier. So I was watching those videos and I had to record them at 1080p because the UI doesn't scale on bigger screens. I mean, I've got a 4K monitor. I could run it at 4K all. I could run the game 4K all the way to the end with no chugging. It'd be perfect. But at 4K. These things in the corners, they just, they're tiny. Uh, it's hard to play, it would be impossible to watch. So I want my audience to be able to follow exactly what I'm doing, exactly what I'm clicking on. I want them to know, I want them to be able, be able to see all the numbers. If I can't, if I'm struggling to see them, then chances are my audience is probably struggling to see them too. So downloaded a couple of mods. The first mod for ease of looking at numbers, especially, was the Stellaris font mod. Haven't played Stellaris. It, it's, it's not something that tickles me in the right place. It's, um, I don't know, it might get better. I've watched a few playthroughs and it's not really for me just yet. I mean, it, it's, it's promising, it's promising, it might get there. But anyway, the font that they use is easy to see uh, and it, it pops out a lot you can see it, it's easier to read so we've got that and these windows themselves should be just a little bit bigger than they would have been uh, the actual UI I don't think has changed that much maybe by a factor of 5% or so but we are, we are playing on 1440p I thought middle of the road if it's if you can't see the stuff that's going on if it is too small, do let me know. Uh, we'll revert back to 1080p. It's just I wanted the map to look a lot better than it did on 1080. In 1080, to me, now looks like 720 did, or 740. Which one was it? 420? 740? Did a few years ago. Um, and yeah, it was, well, okay. Who's recorded this on the potato? I want you to be able to not only see the numbers, but I want you to be able to see what's going on and it not be a struggle to watch. So, now that we've got that out of the way, let's let's get into the playthrough, shall we? Now we just we just pieced out of a war against our three rivals, and that was great. They'd all budded up together, which meant that we could fight them all. We could take the money off them all. We could take power projection mods off them all. And I hope 
that we don't get big enough where these drop out of our rivalries. To that end, I think I might not develop my provinces just yet. We'll look around for someone else to fight and we'll time it to such an extent that we can come back in and fight these three. Hopefully, have you still got... Yeah, we can't declare war now, but if we were to declare war again, it'd be the same war. And that ends in... We'd have to fight with Verdun, because if we fought with his mates, they bring in additional people. Yep, we don't want to be fighting that. Saxlandberg, who would you fight? Who would you bring into a fight? Yeah, you bring in Brandenburg. So we need... We need Verdun. We need the declaration to be on Verdun. And as they were the last one that we pieced out, it means... October 1479. So, we need to find a fight around us. We can now, I've just realised, we can now fabricate directly on Lebec. Who would, wow. Utrecht, Magdeburg, Riga, Hamburg, Bremen, Hamburg and Bremen. Bremen, Hamburg, Lebec. Two free cities of the empire. Uh, the free cities you don't want to be fighting directly because they, yeah, the emperor automatically comes in, no matter what, and the emperor brings in all his mates. What would this be? Oh, Austria would be a co-belligerent. Well, let's wait till Austria decides not to, and then after that with Denmark on our side that might be a fight for the future we'll get a claim on them and if Austria falls off we can take it means we can take uh, one of the three cities out up here uh, with impunity um, once we've fought for this fought over Lubeck we can in the peace deal take uh, say Hamburg That'd be nice to give us a direct, um, well, it, it's just coastal provinces. Coastal provinces in the node that we need to be in trade-wise, even though we're not a merchant republic. It's always good to pick up these types of provinces. The Elbe Estuary and the Coastal Centre of Trade. That's going to be mega powerful in that node. And our power is only 8%. That no. one. Which means we can take this, and we've not had to fight the Emperor for it. And whilst this is coring, we'll link that into another fight against these three guys. For nothing other than milking them for all the money and power projection, just like we just did now. In terms of tech, we're now in January. This has come down to... 24 and this is 19 we will take this we will take this and we will take this we can't take this not just yet okay and I think that is going to be the sum total of our but it's the next one is the ideas what's the, the spread of of uh, institutions like is it in our land it is coming in into our land At what rate is it coming in? Not by much. Institutions don't like to spread that quickly through countries that don't like you. So, so if you can hear Dylan, he's doing his uh, his usual usual ridiculousness. Yeah, the only person that likes us is Lobeck that's around us. And so if they if they got the institution, then they might be able to spread it to us, but they haven't even got it themselves. I won't be surprised if the people around them don't like Lobeck, because Lobeck is allied to us. What can we take? What can we take here? We're not passing this because we have no need of it just yet, so we'll save it for a rainy day. This one. 
Catholicism gains 0.1 reform desire, but in turn, till the end of the game, we get a national tax modifier of plus two and half of a percent of missionary strength. Sounds good. Sounds good. We have no need now to stay Catholic. The idea behind staying Catholic was so that we could take this and we could keep cycling this. Not often you see England as a courier controller. So, because we're not a merchant republic, we might we might flip we might flip to that. i do like protestant um i like how you can you can affect your country depending on what you're doing either development or warfare or ideas the minus i think it's minus five percent to idea cost i think is is very powerful what else we've got provincial unrest but it's okay because we've got all our dudes down here Stability is low, that's alright. We did take that event to keep our guy in charge for an extra term instead of taking the stability. I still think that was a good idea. Keeping, retaining the points instead of grabbing a new guy at 411. Um, the, the point generation right now is what we need. So let's have a look around us. What, who can we fight and what can we fight them for? Utrecht and Cologne. Cologne and Utrecht. They'd link up straight away and there'd be something like a 16 stack that we'd have to fight. And then Cologne would come up and tag along. That might not be the route just yet. Let's have a look at Cleve. Cleves. Hess and Arken. Hess. Hess was just recently at war with Cologne. And we did look down here, but it was just too much a mess. And I didn't want to walk into that much of a mess because not knowing where armies are, not knowing who's fighting who, if we'd have ended up getting stuck behind a fort somewhere up here and the other three had managed to group up their whole entire force down here, then we'd have been in trouble. A lot of our fights so far we've been able to swoop in and effectively stack wipe uh, someone straight away. We did it with um, Mecklenburg. We walked in there and we wiped 6,000 troops out of the equation and suddenly it was a fair war. Again, with the Oldenburg stack, we moved in there, we wiped them out straight away and suddenly it, it went to a... it became a fair war for us. So... Let's have a look. Anyone else? What about Brunswick? I don't think we've looked at Brunswick. That's probably why we didn't look at Brunswick. Brandenburg. But Brandenburg is having issues at the moment. Brandenburg would join even though they're getting their poop pushed in by Magdeburg of all places. What about Rostock proper? Oh, that's okay. Only Denmark. Only Denmark would come in. God damn it. What about Pomerania? Austria would protect them. Already been at war with Saxe Lauenburg. What about just Utrecht? We can get. Can we get there? No, we can't. No, we can't fabricate. We can't. They're a separate sea tile. Well, it looks like. So anyone else? Anyone else? We will get this claim. We will get this claim and we will continue on. We are... No, Denmark. No. I will not give you my trade power. We will continue to try and get this alliance with Poland. I reckon if they lose a few troops in this war that they've got going on. If they lose enough troops, then our armor strength will appear to be more. 
and hopefully we can get that alliance. By I mean that alliance, I mean all of that. All the manpower, all the armies uh, from there. And it looks like they're, they're going to come up and, and take out Teutonic Order. And having someone outside the Empire willing to... Well, Denmark as well. But having Denmark and Poland willing to come in. That will be... That will be good for us. Um, just having that kind of backup. If we can't get stuff with the Emperor himself, which it doesn't look like we can. We can't royal marriage because we're a republic. But we might lock, might lock someone on Austria, much like we've done with Poland here, and uh, give that a go. Yeah, it looks like they've chased Magdeburg off. Is it Magdeburg and Hamburg? Magdeburg and Hamburg against attacker against the Teutonic Order. All right. Teutonic Order has a... Right, okay, I get it. Right. How about directly on? No, their alliance chain is huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Discovered agents. I don't care. Alright, we can take that tech now. Done. Which gives us a 20% trade efficiency for being ahead of time. Which will help out with... Well, it won't help out much because we're still stuck. We're still quite small. Let's have a look at buildings. We have the money. Temples are usually quite good straight away. Local trade power though. We'll get local trade power in here because it's going to give us a huge 5.7 and everywhere else. No. Production efficiency. Production efficiency on provinces that have a good uh, something expensive that they produce good trade good can work wonders for you maybe not green especially if you can couple it with a manufacturing a little bit further down the road so let's go production efficiency I think we also get bonuses to our production No. Sorry if you can hear the uh, hear the cat. He's uh, I've left my door open. He's obviously run off downstairs, and he's probably going through the bin, like the dirty tramp he is. We had chicken last night, and it's probably in the bin, and that's what he's going for. The little bastard. Okay, let's uh, let's get some let's get some of this going. It says zero. It says pretty much zero, just because of the overextension that we've got in these provinces. Uh, yeah, 86%. 63, 98, 98 and it'll still give something. Which shows you how powerful the workshop can be. So, let's, let's get workshops up and running. Wow, maybe not that one. Let's keep at least a little bit of money in the bank. So... We have a trade post here, which is going to give us marketplace even, sorry, which will give us a local trade power of plus 50. Let's have a look at our trade power. So the trade power from this province itself. Eight point seven percent. Yeah, that's alright. Controlled by the burgers plus 50%. For mercantilism plus 22%. Coastal plus 25%. Can we get more ships? I've just thought, can we get, can we build more trade ships? More trade ships is better trade ships. We can. 
we may also actually yeah we may also get rid of some of these cogs I doubt we'll need for you can get out trading and that is my alarm for this episode sorry if this episode has been a little bit tentative from the last one um, it was all go and now it's suddenly come to a grinding halt that's kind of what you have to do in the Empire you've got to have a look at what fights you can pick around you if you can't pick a fight that's advantageous then wait a little bit and something will come along uh, there is no point in trying to expand too quickly too aggressively incurring the wrath of the Emperor and then getting people in a coalition against you it's that's that's end game that's rage quick kind of material stability is no yeah yeah I know I know stability is low might have to at some point bring that up anyway I'm off to uh, to retrieve my cat from a bin which he's probably found himself in uh, probably wipe all the chicken off him and uh, yeah okay I have been looking marine you as always have been amazing come back in the next episode where we won't have the noise of a cat in a bin take care